Kara Shalom everyone and welcome to our watercolor journey. Heinrich is going to show us how he painted this fern leaf bouquet. As always, the materials used are listed in the description below. And we have French Ultramarine, Hansa Yellow and Payne's Grey Blue on the palette. There is a link to the sketch in the description below. So here we start. He has the paper pasted onto a board and it's flat on the table and he's wetting the entire paper with a large mop. He starts off with the yellowish mix, um, yellow green that he made from Hansa and from French Ultramarine. Now the Hansa yellow is a little bit more in the bottom mix and less French Ultramarine and then at the in the middle we have about a 50-50 mix of ultramarine and yellow and at the top there's more ultramarine and less yellow. Every now and again he would add a little bit of Payne's Grey Blue just to make it a wee bit darker. He wants to preserve the light on the leaf so he used the yellow mix to paint the middle part of the leaf and then he uses the darker mixes to kind of frame the leaf because the dark playing against the light will really make the leaf stand out. Now he dabs in the color because he want to get that kind of mottled effect that will go well with the, the bouquet. So do not paint in straight lines or circles. Just dab it in very very lightly and allow the paint to mix with each other because that is how you are going to get these very interesting different greens. And if you look at it like this you cannot believe that you actually only have basically two colors in there with a touch of a third touch of Payne's Grey. But other than that it is just French Ultramarine and Hansa Yellow. He doesn't clean the brush, he just wets it every now and again and he keeps painting. And that is how he creates these amazing greens all the time. So he's done with that, the background painting. Now he is going to add a little bit of salt. And the salt works extremely well with French Ultramarine because Ultramarine is highly granulating. And for some odd reason, the salt just likes to work with ultramarine and it pushes the pigment away to create beautiful effects. Let your painting dry. You can use a hair dryer, but let it settle a little bit first before you do that. And then it is time to start making the bouquet circles. Here he's using a Rubens brush. It's a stippler brush or a stencil brush. That's what the two names that I found for them. And uh, what he does is he's dipping it in water and then makes a tiny little circle with the brush on the paper and then dabs out the excess water. Do not press too hard. You might damage the paper. It depends on the quality of your paper but you might damage it if you press too hard. You will find that the paper starts to pile. In other words, little pieces of the paper stand up and um, that's not a very good thing to have. So he's making the little circles at random and he started off with a small brush but he's going to go over to using a larger brush just now. So he's, he's got a few different sizes of the stencil brushes. You can use one size and just make your circles a little bit bigger or you can use different size brushes. If you want to know more about different tips and ideas for creating uh, bouquets I will put a link in the description below and you can also have a look at the tag here at the top to see where you can find some more ideas about bokeh. Bokeh is a really interesting, very relaxing form of creating your art. When you use the stencil brush, make sure that you rinse it regularly. It tends to pick up the paint and then deposit it onto the next circle if you don't clean it off nicely. 
Now he's on to his really big brush and this is an art secret brush and as you can see it's quite large and that is the one that he uses to make the big circles. Now take note that the circles are all random sizes, they are placed randomly and some of them touch, some of them overlap, some of them are whiter and some of them are darker. So depending on how hard you press you will go deeper into your paint layers and lift more paint until you get to the white of the paper or if you only press very lightly you will only lift maybe the very top layer or the paint that is easily lifted and by pressing harder or softer you can actually create quite an interesting effect because you will have a variation of colors. Now we are going to start with the leaf and he is very lightly wetting the middle vein and he's using the Princeton rigger there and he's dabbing in a little bit of the green mix that he made and just to define the center vein so that we can start doing the side leaves. The leaves on this fern has quite a variety of colors and textures and we're going to show you how Heinrich got the textures into it. He lightly wets the little part of the leaf and then he adds the lightest green and he diffuses it with water and then he's going to add the darker greens stippling it in just dabbing it in little by little so that the paint flows naturally into the grooves of the paper and that helps to create the the texture if you paint like pressing hard with your brush you will kind of press down into the sizing of the paper and then you won't have the same type of effect. So when you do this, use the very tip of your brush and press very, very lightly. Just dab it in. Now it's going to follow the same principle with all of the leaves. Using the same greens that is mixed, um, he usually wets the little leaf and then he starts dipping in the different greens. The light green, the yellow green, is a little bit more watery than the next two colors. The darkest color has more of a, almost like a honey consistency, and then the others are a little bit more watery, and that is so that it doesn't cause cauliflowers. So your light green is the most watery and then you have progressively thicker consistency paints. Because you are working wet into wet, the, if you have paints that have the same consistency, it's just going to flow into each other and not make much of a difference. So try to put a little bit of a thicker consistency paint onto your previous layer so that the paint lies on top and not blend into the previous layer. You will notice that he doesn't always start with the lightest color and that is simply to create variation. In this one here he started with a mid color and then he added the lighter one and uh, that created a hard edge, darker hard edge at the top of the leaf and that gives dimension and an interest to the leaf. So you don't need to always start with your lightest color in this case. You can start with a mid-range or the darker color and then work either way to a lighter or to a darker color. 
The darker color here is a stronger consistency and that's why it doesn't bleed so much. It kind of just lies on top and it creates its own little hard edge there. And that helps to create the texture. There he dabbed in a bit of the green and then used water to disperse the paint. He's using the Haben Kulinski number no. 2 brush. It's a Da Vinci brush and um, it's really very handy for creating the texture there. It's got a very fine point and um, it holds a lot of water. If you want to know more about the Kulinski brushes, uh, the Haben Kulinski brushes, I will put a link in the description below where I did a review on these brushes. With every one of the leaves he's trying to keep the variation there so that is why he keeps using different colors or different mixes and different strengths of mixes and again he starts sometimes starts with a light color and sometimes with a mid or or the dark color so that there's a lot of variation and a little bit of interest in the painting of the leaves. Depending on the direction in which the leaf lies, um, he would put the dark color at the bottom or at the top because the dark color kind of shows the shadow side of the specific little leaf. And uh, by doing that, you can almost see the leaves lying in different directions on the main stem. So like I said, he's following exactly the same principle right through with all the leaves. The leaves here at the bottom are mostly dark and they are almost monotone and there's a specific reason for that. In this specific painting we want to really focus on the light and the tops of the leaf. So the bottom leaves should not really be in focus. That is why they are a little bit darker and they are a very basic monotone color so that your eye isn't drawn to them they are just there to support the light leaves at the top
Heinrich opted to leave the kind of a hard edge at the bottom left, but you can use a wet brush or a damp brush to soften that edge if you don't like it. Now he's adding the last final details to the leaves and he's using the Haben Kulinski number no. zero brush and he's just adding a little bit more dark to enhance the detail on the leaves. Take care when you do these last little bits of detail that you don't lose your light. It is important to keep the light in the leaves. So really just dab in the colors very, very lightly. As I mentioned earlier, bokeh painting is actually very relaxing and um, it teaches you quite a lot of patience because sometimes you feel like oh, it must just finish now and other times you can just make as many circles as you like on the page and it is very rewarding. So if you are interested in doing more bokeh paintings, we have quite a variety of different kinds of bokeh paintings on our channel and I'll put the info card at the top and um, have a look at them and see if there's anything that interests you and please let us know in the comments what you think about bokeh and maybe if you have some ideas that you can share with us it would be very welcome. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you soon. Vaya con Dios.